everybody. By unpopular demand, I'm still here. <clears throat> Ron Mata hosting Activate Worcester. We haven't, uh, we've been on hiatus for a couple of months, but now we're back and ready to roll. And uh, just so you know, I'm wearing my Amalfi shirt today because it's still nice weather out there. And I got this literally when I was in the Amalfi Coast two years ago. So I thought it would be appropriate for me to wear it today for some reason. And we're actually shooting this on the 21st of uh, August, relevant for a couple of reasons. Uh, number one, we actually have chronologically one more month left in the summer. So before the snow flies, and enjoy the good weather if you can. It's important. Uh, secondly, a quick reminder, and you'll be seeing this show for the next couple of weeks, I guess. Uh, on the 3rd, which is, I guess, the day after uh, Labor Day, easy to remember, we have the primaries here in the city. And typically, they tend to be a big yawn. Maybe you get 10% of the people who are registered to vote will actually show up for it. But there's you know, quite a few races that are in contention, and it's a good idea to get out and, uh, and vote. If, if it's a simple process, you'll be in, you'll be out in you know, two minutes. The lines won't be there at all. And don't just wait for November 5th, which, of course, is the big one. Uh, this leads into that. So you know, do your civic duty, if you will. I think it's uh, a very important thing to do. But that being said, <clears throat> uh, our show tonight, we have a single guest and a very good guest and a lady that's been with us many, many times before. And she's very involved in the city, very involved with the kids, with the schools. In fact, she ended up running for the school committee, which was a, a battle royal, and uh, she ended up winning, unbeknownst to uh, the powers that be who want things just stay exactly as they are. Well, she doesn't want that. She wants things to get better for her kids and for all kids, and that's why she's here tonight, okay? And I am more than happy to welcome Kathy Roy, Back to the not so golden EIB microphone. Here. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, welcome. I'm glad thank to, you for glad to thank see you, you for having me. Anytime, as you know. And I guess going back, I've known Kathy for, for quite a while, and she's always been involved. And I guess the question is, why did you decide? What were the, what were the factors? Why did you decide to run for the school committee? Well, there's a lot of factors. I, um, number one, like you said, I've been involved in Worcester schools, um, both as a parent um, and helping out on other events. I adore the children of the city. They're, they're our, our best thing to invest in. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to be a part of the decision making and part of the questioning, part of the process to help our kids to become the best that they can be. And that's, that's our job, to watch out for them and to make sure our teachers, our paraeducators, that they have all the necessary means to, to do that because that's the most important job in the world is to educate our children. And I wanted to be a part of the process. That's, that's well said. And I guess the other part of it, too, you were and still are a very concerned parent. Yes, my children are adults now. <clears throat> um, but you were part of it when they were going to oh, school. Oh, absolutely. And all that. Parent PTA, parent. Hello. I ended up working in development and helping with alumni relations to bring money in. Um, PTAs were my thing. Uh, I know that it sounds like it's not important, but it really is because you fundraise, you give the children the things that are not in the budget, you help, you talk to area businesses and tell them well, this classroom needs whiteboards. What can you do for me? Mm -hmm. um, and whatever you can get for free, why not? Well, what you're talking about is, is community involvement. Correct. And involvement is the key word. And I guess to some extent, that's why we started doing this show damn near 10 years ago, to be, a, I can use that word, catalyst, to be a catalyst to involvement. Uh, understand what the issues are, and don't just sit back and throw rocks at the TV, if you will. <laughs> Get involved, and it's, it's not easy. And a big part, in, in my view, is to have the parents and the grandparents and the uncles and the aunts and everybody else all involved in what's going on in the school system. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people don't know this. Almost two-thirds of all the taxes that you and I pay 
guess where it goes? It goes to the school system. So to sit back passively and say, oh, well, I don't have any kids in school now, and blah, blah, blah. Well, you're allowing the powers that be, quote, unquote, to take two-thirds of those dollars that you sweat for, and uh, you're letting them basically have a blank check with no feedback. And a big part, in my opinion, of being a good parent, grandparent, relative, whatever, friend, is to know what's going on in the schools and to actively support or not support what's going on. In other words, get involved. You sit back, you get what you deserve, which is nothing. So anyway. Well, I've never believed in sitting back. And if you have an opinion, you have to either speak out on it or act on it. And if, you know, there's no good in just talking um, if you're not going to do something about it. And don't come to me with a problem. Come to me with what do you think a solution can be? So in other words, do your homework. Do your homework, speak, and then let's work together. School. Let's do work together, homework. and then let's find the best solution for this problem. And stay on it. And stay, stay on, on it. it. And um, oh, good. you know, the children are the most important thing. Agreed. And by the way, these conversations <clears throat> literally have absolutely nothing to do with politics. I don't care if you're left, right, center, up, down. It's true. This is where it's at. It's got nothing to do with politics. So. That being said, now back to politics, if you want to go with that. <laughs> when you ended up running for the job, mm -hmm. okay, which was highly contested, as I remember, okay, <clears throat> what is it that you did that was able to separate yourself from the other folks that were competing at that point as well? How did you win? What was your formula? What did I you had do? an amazing team and wonderful I've mentors. I have been involved in the process of, of helping candidates run. Um, the, it, it's getting out there. It's talking to people. Um, the door knocking. It's it's um, 100 to 200 doors. I try to do every two to three days, and that seems like a lot. Oh. But when you have a team, and I had a wonderful team of 30, 20, 30 people, and that's what we did. We went out. We door knocked. We met with people. If there was a constituent who wanted to talk to me directly, they, we took notes, and then I would go back to that house. Mm -hmm and talk to them directly. Um, we also had people who gave generously of their time to um, phone bank. Mm -hmm. um, and, and like I said, just getting out there, going to different events, talking to people in the crowd, um, hearing what it is they were worried about and saying, OK. And that's how I put my push card together, was to see what are the biggest concerns. And, and a lot of the concerns I heard were the same concerns I was having. Um, so I was able to um, put that all together and, and just get out there and meet people. And yeah, the door knocking is very, very, very important. I think what you're really saying <clears throat> is what they used to call retail politics. Uh, just everything that you said, getting out there, shaking people's hands, introducing yourself, telling them who you are, A, and B, what you're running for and the reasons why and so forth, but then it's, it's sort of like you're being a catalyst to get them involved in the process. In other words, you're not in it because hey, this job's gonna pay half a million a year and <laughs> whoever I have to kill to make that happen, it's done. That's not where it's at. Right. And I'm an old sales manager in Gillette days and everything else, and what you did is what we used to do, quote unquote, in the old days, is get out there call on as many potential customers as possible, visit all your existing customers, give them reasons to stay with your product line and to grow it. And in English, use, you know, use the effort that you have. Don't sit back and expect technology. And as, as I had my work. core group, yep. but as we were getting out there, yep. I was <clears throat> getting phone calls and emails from people saying, I want to help you, what can I do? So um, I, I, I have, was able to get a really good, and I'm still friendly with so many people um, throughout my district who will call and say, hey, I watched school committee. You, you were kind of quiet on this issue. What are you thinking? Um, and they, they tell me. They tell me what they want to see me do. You know, that's, that's a really interesting point from a number of perspectives. <clears throat> One of the things that I've heard from a number of folks who have been elected that have sat in your chair 
in different levels of the city. I'll ask them, well, you know, what kind of feedback do you get from your quote unquote constituents? And they always seem to come back with the same basic concepts. Number one, we get very, very little feedback, believe it or not. So we never really know if we're doing a good job or a bad job based on the feedback that we're getting. So as a result, we do what we think is right. Mm, I'm not so sure. Who they do hear from are people that have a vested interest in something. Uh, they have an, ac an ox to go, or whatever the, the, the term happens to be. Um, they're looking for something, an improvement on their street or street lights or whatever it happens to be. Then on the other side of it, you get people who are really aggravated about something. People speeding up and down the street, the garbage not being picked up, or when we used to have snow in Worcester, remember <laughs> those days? That it's, you know, it's really not being taken care of and the streets aren't. So in other words, that's the kind of thing. And one of the, one of the points I've tried to make from this little perch we have here is just because you go out and vote, and by the way, it's still a joke in this city, the, the participation. You're still 15 to 20 percent of those who are eligible to vote who actually vote. That, that's an abomination. Now, of course, like Archie used to say, you, we vote votes in the big ones. Well, okay. So everybody's going to get really, really jacked and pumped about Trump and Kamala, blah, blah, blah. And then what? You have a problem on your street or whatever, you're going to call one of those people to help you? Forget about it. As Tip O'Neill used to say, all politics is local, which means just because you go and vote, okay, your job is not done as a citizen. You should continue to provide feedback to the people who you voted in, whether you like them or not. Let them know what's going on. And this is on an ongoing basis because basically the bottom line is you're the boss, you're paying their salary. Now, if you've ever been in a position where you're paying people to do something and you just let them do whatever the hell they want to do, well, then you're a chump. You're being used because you're lazy. Same thing with us as voters. And if you don't get back, let them know what's going on. Caveat emptor, as they used to say. Now... With, with that as a segue, you're in the, in fact, a quick background. They've changed the composition of the school committee. What, what's it all about now versus the way it used to be done? Uh, that, that's hard for me to answer because I wasn't involved in the no. past. Um, well, we, you had your own little district. Yes. Oh, that's okay. I know where you're I'm going. Sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, they changed it a couple of years ago yeah, so that the next election ago. would be runs running in districts so my district is really huge i have 11 schools ranging from the massasoit area all the way down to canterbury street gates lane heard street the my high school south my middle school sullivan um i have columbus park um I'm trying to think heard street i do know all these I do, because I check I'm, in with I'm them. Amazed, yeah. <laughs> um, I have been to, I've had the privilege of going into many of my schools, um, which I, I did after I was elected. I started doing reading days, and mm -hmm. I love reading days. Absolutely love them. I'm sure you do. And uh, now I've got some schools to, go, to still go into, but I want to let, let the dust settle, let the kids get acclimated, mm -hmm. um, and then I'll be going into the schools I haven't met yet. And I can't wait for reading day to come back around. So you're really involved. I love it. Is, I love, love, great. love it. And uh, I always put my thinking cap on when I talk to teachers and say, you know, money is tight. The budget, there's a budget deficit of 22 million. And, and that scares me. Um, we try to vote to cut back in other areas. But unfortunately, those areas weren't cut. So I, I do worry about the fact that we had to let teachers go. But of that number, there are so many teachers that put in re for retirement, and they put um, some teachers decide to go try another school system. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it, there it, it's a large number, but there were people that wanted to retire. All bet. Um, so <clears throat> I, I know this going into this, and I got to tell you. So I did reading day at Columbus Park. 
And uh, then I went back and helped them with um, their spree day at the end of the year. And the, the kindergarten class I read to, as soon as they saw me, Mrs. Roy! And they all came running, cool. and they were excited to see me and said, what did you bring us? I said, well, this time I didn't bring anything. <laughs> but but they're, they're just a joy. Well, you, you, you earned that. that, that that's, that's great. So I, I guess the issues that you're working on, one... It, Money is always an issue, no matter what you do and how you deploy the assets. And one thing that I, that I remember, having gotten fairly close to those numbers several years ago, was the amount of money that's being spent, not so much for the teachers, but for everybody who supports them, okay? Um, I thought it would be the other way around, just looking at it from the outside. I thought the bulk of the money would be spent for the teachers, because they're the boots on the ground. Yeah. They're the ones that are interfacing with the kids, not the administrators sitting in the building. On, uh, well, that was one of the things that came up to Irving cut 500000 right? Yeah, they're all sitting From the there. administrative end of it, and that it didn't go that direction. No, yeah, that doesn't surprise me, because we're still, we're still talking politics, but, um, unfortunately. You know, there are things that the, the teachers are going to need, the kids are going to need. Um, you know, we, we did the safety audit. A lot of those goals were not met. By the end of the school year, and because you know, I'm just hoping they can, we can put those in priority status to, to get some of that the more of the safety audit recommendations done. Tell me about safety. What, what's going on? Um, well, one of the things that I'm a little nervous about, but we'll see how it plays out. You know, mm -hmm. it's a whole brand new year, but we did cut um, the security guard, so that that was a thirty-eight thousand dollars budget item. Um, now we're going to have. Excuse me. Why was that cut? Uh, you don't need them? You don't need security guards? Well, 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 they do. But what they were was the security. If you went into a high school, you're met by a person at a desk, and you have to state why you're there, mm -hmm. who you're going to see. And that's still, they're still going to have somebody doing that, okay? But it's, it's going to be not somebody with a security company. So it'll be done internally as opposed Correct. to an external person. Correct. Um, you know, we don't have the, the SLOs anymore, the school liaison, um, school liaison officers. We, we don't have the school resource officers. Part of that, too, though, I did talk to Chief Saucier about it. They don't have the manpower. We, 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 need, we need to get some young folks to want to be a police officer. Um, well, that, that's a whole different subject. That's they, a whole new su different subject. I guess subject. the thing of it is, when you look at the... The complexity of operating schools to begin with, that it's not the same white bread people that were there 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, when I say white bread, you know, English speaking, period, no ESL. Now you have certainly a, a tremendous Hispanic population. Sometimes there's, there's, there's issues there, uh, which is where the ESL comes in. But now, and they're very proud to say, we have people in our schools from almost 100 different countries. 79 languages is what Eric Batista said in his address to the city. Might as well be 790. Uh, for and when I went, to, I went to one event, I'm trying to think where it was. It was up at the technical high school. But they did have earphones for the parents. Mm -hmm. So things were translated. Which, I mean, that, I thought That's that was great. a good idea because now the parent knows... You know, they know what's going on. Yeah, yeah. And no, I, I, and I, I, and I do believe that everybody's trying to learn English. It's, 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 it's a complicated language, especially when you want to type out words like thought, bought, <laughs> with the G-H-T. I've always had trouble with English. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I guess the thing is back to the safety issue, okay? Because of the raw numbers of kids that are in the schools now and the potentials for issues when people have trouble understanding what's going on, and the way, the way kids will bully other kids from different backgrounds and all that sort of thing. And just our society has become a hell of a lot more hostile, which, which permeates down to the, to the school level. Uh, you hear of teachers getting the hell beat out of them by quote-unquote students, um, and the negative feedback is a little slap on the wrist and so on and so forth. And you know, I'm not into you know, beating the hell out of kids at all. Uh, but at the same token, what I am is in, what I am into is having an environment that's conducive to learning. <clears throat> and yeah, we're worried about the kids being fed properly, which is important. Critical. Though it is, as if they're not fed properly and if they're not given support beyond that point, 
you're just not going to perform well in the classroom if you don't perform well in the classroom you're going to drop out or you're going to know nothing in fact which is another issue if we take a look at the the scores of kids who are going through our public school systems not just here but everywhere you look uh, they're, they're grossly underperforming and well, what I, my wife works in a college and the number of kid, kids, students, whatever you want to call them, that are in remedial programs, remedial math, remedial English, in college, it, it, it's mind-bending. So what's happening, in my view, is that the quality of education for the kids, whether it's at the high school, intermediate, or grammar school level, <clears throat> something's rotten in Denmark. Well, there's, yeah, there's, all, there's every every system right now throughout the United States is are yeah, having oh yeah, oh yeah. having problems. I'm not I'm not isolating Worcester, but what I am saying is that we have no control over the rest of the country. No, we don't. What you have control over, at least you're trying to, which I think is brilliant, is what we're doing here. Well, I'm trying. I'm going to keep my opinions to myself. I'm I'm looking forward to seeing the MCAS scores when they come out in October. Yeah. See if we've made any improvements. If if the children haven't improved, engage. Look at the data mm -hmm. and the statistics and say, how are we faring with a similar size city yeah. with the same, you know, um, with the same number of students? And then we can gauge that. And then hopefully as a school committee member, we can say, okay, we can help the superintendent and the teachers and say, what can we do to make your jobs better and help the children to, mm -hmm. to learn and bring them up to proficient level? Um, Last year, we our third graders were below level. Um, I, th I think I believe it was 30, 38 percent of reading reading oh, proficiency. Um, and a lot of that that I've understood is that those were the babies that were supposed to be starting kindergarten. COVID. COVID. Yeah. You know, um, and that behind. was a struggle for parents. That was a struggle for the <clears> child <throat> trying to trying to get them ready. They may, they may never get caught up. I pray they do. I pray they do. Well, I'd like to see like summer school programs that are made fun, you know, if they're struggling. Mm -hmm. And um, that, again, that comes down to who's going to pay for it. Well, one way or another, we're going to pay for it on the other end. Mm -hmm. if, they, if you're graduating kids because you're just pushing them through, or you cook the books, so to speak, by making the thresholds a little bit lower for every one of these things, rather than higher rather than letting the kids stretch to get better and learning critical thinking and all that sort of thing, we're going to have a bunch of folks out there that are going to be on welfare or whatever for a long, long time or underperforming. Well, what, another thing I'm very nervous systems. about, though, is, is the... Um, <clears throat> and I voted against having cell phones and earbuds in the classroom. I'm, I'm adamant against it, and I'm hoping, you know, after... Because it got voted, passed through. And I'm hoping that we can see the statistics, get some feedback from teachers as the school year progresses, maybe quarterly, because I, I just, they're too addicted to technology. They're too addicted. And the bullying, that comes into bullying too, because if you're sitting in a classroom, you know, you're supposed to use your phone at the direction of the teacher. You're mm -hmm. going to watch this, or you're going to listen to this podcast. And, and then they're like, making fun of another classmate. Sure. Now everybody starts giggling. Now everybody's looking at that kid. Um, bullying is, is just, it's not acceptable. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, I was thinking of, uh, you know, when, when this issue came up, I was going to put something on, because I don't take my phone out. Not only do I want, I put it on the agenda not to have school committee members have their phones out. Mm -hmm. I just think that we are, we are voted in. We receive a stipend, mm -hmm. so for those two, three hours, that should have our undivided attention. I'm going to throw a number at you. You're going to be surprised. <clears throat> In the course of a day, how many times does the average adult, adult check their cell phone? Hundreds. Hundreds. It's the number which blew me away, 144 times. But I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to tell any candidate out there, the first thing you need to do Ditch your Facebook, ditch your Instagram, um, ditch Twitter. I can't tell you how happier of a person I am mm -hmm. since I don't sit there and go, oh, God, what are they saying? What are they saying? Who's talking yeah. about me? Yeah. Um, you know, things get back to me, and I just say, oh, well, what can you do? 
But no, um, I, I just I just think we're all way too addicted. You know, it's a funny thing. Um, I've been known to frequent a restaurant or two. Yo. On a, on a daily basis, really? or so it seems. And Italian restaurants. Uh, everything. You know, I'm 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 somebody who perpetuates the food, the food process. <laughs> I go, believe me. But the thing that I do see across the board, whether it's an expensive place, inexpensive, or anything in between, this is what you see. You see the tops of people's heads. They're sitting with whoever they're sitting with, and they're doing this. And it's, it's bizarre, absolutely bizarre. Now, I, I've got, as I think you know, I've got 12 grandkids, and the, the youngest is six. <clears throat> Every one of them lives with these things. I don't think it's parents, healthy. Their parents are all over them to limit the amount of time that they spend with them because it's it's absolutely stupefying. Anyway, but that, but no, even even um, I babysat for some friends in between life. You know, they yeah, were they were yeah. down, and um, he'd always the, the he was a baby. He was a year. Well, he's now he just turned sixteen. I can't believe it. Yeah. But he'd say, Kathy. I play with your phone. And I'd say, no, you're not playing with my phone. And then I'd say, come on. And then I'd put like a, an interactive show on or we'd color. Um, or like, yeah, he was writing his name too. But my kids, my kids, I had them writing and pretty much and reading before they started school. Well, last, last comment for me. Uh, in my family and my wife's family, many of them are either into teaching or retired teachers at, at different levels. And they all basically say the same thing. Teaching now is so much more difficult than it was 10 years ago because the kids are so used to being stimulated on a regular basis that you can't dance fast enough or sing quickly enough to keep the kids involved. It's tough. And then they have trouble shutting down. And they have trouble shutting down. Um... Every across this country, in fact, the same week we voted, and I, like I said, I'm adamant against it, and I always will be. Um, Gavin Newsom in California, mm -hmm. he put a ban on cell phones in schools, yeah. and the, uh, a lot of a lot of communities and then, are, and well, I, I, I wonder, just don't understand. I wonder if it's too late. But one thing that is getting to be too late is unfortunately the old clock on the wall, and we're going to be shut down in a few seconds, which I hate because we can go on for, for hours with these things. I know the hand's flying. I want to thank Kathy for Thank you for having me. As always, a Terrific pleasure. Terrific session. Lots of good information here. Remember some of the things you heard tonight about getting involved and go out and do it. And again, start with September 3rd, get out and vote, and get ready for the, the big one in November, okay? Thanks again. See you next week. Thank you, Ron. Thank you.